So going on and coming back to Scotland, we have a question from the Edinburgh Yes Hub volunteers. How can Scotland make more use even before independence of the strength of the international movement against nuclear weapons as expressed in the ratifications, the signing and the consistent support of the UN? How can we bring that international movement to bear in Scottish politics? Yeah, I think actually I have to say, I mean, my hat goes off out, out completely to Scottish CND, to Scotland's for Peace, uh, UN House Scotland, uh, Yes Hub, you know, all of all of you, you know, Faz Lane, uh, a lot of Scottish members in, in, in XR Peace as well and all of that, because that's what you've been doing. I mean, you've been inviting people you know, like Alexander Kment, uh, you know, people like me, you know, international campaigners like, you know, Ray Atchison from Wilpf and from ICANN, of course. You know, you've been inviting people to your meetings and you've been getting media coverage and you've been, you know, really giving us platforms to talk to you know, members of parliament in, you know, in the Scottish parliament and, and you know, all of that work is wonderful and just keep, keep going. There's, you know, really that has to keep going. Um, uh, where, you know, when we're able to go back to in person, but there's more we can still do on Zoom. And in fact, internationally, you can get some great, spe you know, more international speakers. And I'm hoping that my report is going to really provide a resource and a tool to do it because I worked very hard to kind of look at it from so many angles and bring it very up to date on the, you know, it's not, it's a commentary on the actual treaty text and all referenced, everything's referenced because I'm so sick of having part of the MIBA establishment just turn around and say, oh, but the treaty's just this, that and the other and it doesn't deal with verification and it doesn't deal with the NPT is thinner, much thinner than the TPNW. Doesn't have anything about implementation, anything about uh, an institution, anything about um, verification. Any, it's got the safeguards which are only applicable on the non-nuclear countries that join and so on. The TPNW is halfway, if you like, in terms of its detail between the NPT, which is absolute bare bones stuff and had to have all that kind of added on, and the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, which dotted practically every I and crossed every T, but unfortunately hasn't entered into force because it fell foul of rivalry among the nuclear armed states. So uh, when we think about that, that's what we have to have in play. So thank you to all of, all of you campaigners in Scotland, because I think you really have, um, you, you know, engage. I, I would definitely engage a lot more with Ireland as well, because Ireland was a heavy lifting on the, on the TPNW from, you know, showed what a small island nation that, is a member of the EU, but has refused to join NATO, as indeed has Austria refused to join NATO, but, you know, does quite a lot of stuff with, with NATO states of, of other kinds, but, but never to do with, with the military and, and nuclear side. Ireland, you know, the UK is very fond of saying we punch above our weight. I hate that phrase, but if you want to think of any country that in diplomatic and you know, an international terms is really way above. You know, has influence way above its size. You'd look to Ireland. You'd look to Norway. You'd look to um, Austria. You don't look to the UK. We are diminishing. Um, you know, we are diminished by the fact that we have nuclear weapons, and we don't see a way out of our dependence on military production of all kinds. I mean, don't get me started on BAE, BAE and Saudi Arabia and, and selling arms to despotic um, countries that have a, the most appalling human rights record in the world, but you can find all of that information on CAT. So Scotland really, you know, if Scotland's for peace, Scotland actually could play such an important role um, in, in, in being 
a peacemaking country that has influence internationally way beyond what either the UK based in Westminster has these days and more along the kinds of, of, of lines that uh, Norway or, or, or Ireland or, or Austria show. And let's not forget some of the others like Costa Rica and Mexico and, and New Zealand as well. You know, some of these smaller countries really have a lot of diplomatic, you know, peace building influence. And, you know, that's really, I, th I, th I think, where there's a lot of hope in where Scotland could be heading.